Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Find Your Model Health, the official podcast for those looking to optimize their long-term health and weight goals and understand how their body really works. I hope you're really, really well, and I hope you're getting into the swing of things. It's almost Christmas, almost December. Sure, why wouldn't you? Everyone else seems to be putting up their Christmas decorations So we might as well embrace those Christmas vibes. This week's podcast episode is eagerly awaited. And I'm not just saying that. So many people have been asking me about this. And I'm starting to wonder, is it because Christmas is coming and people get a little bit more frisky around Christmas with the extra alcohol and treats and stuff? Anyway, if you haven't guessed already, this podcast episode is the libido episode. And there may possibly be a follow-up on this, but I'm going to try and make this one as informative as possible and cover everything I can. And then um, it is going to be a little bit longer. But as always, if you have any questions, reach out to me and ask me. Um, So we're going to look at the causes of low libido and then some of the things we can fix. I really, really, really want you to understand what's going on in this episode. I'm going to try pace it. And like I said, it'll be a little bit longer. But before we go on, I must emphasize that the information in these podcast episodes is for informational purposes only and should not be taken as medical advice. Please consult your health practitioner before making any lifestyle changes. And like I mentioned, this question pops up so much, like so much. Men or women, if you think you're the only one that has no desire to be intimate and that there's something wrong with you, you are very misinformed. Men, if your wife or woman doesn't want to be intimate with you, she's not the only one. It's literally nearly all women, especially after a certain age. It is literally nearly all women. And men, it's not you. It's not your problem. It's not because of you. It's not because she's not attracted to you. It's because of many, many other things, which hopefully will clarify in this. But women, I swear you're not alone. Most of you who follow me, you know I speak to many, many people every day. And nearly every woman I speak to This is a concern, and it generally starts to show up as a concern in women or ladies or girls from their late 20s onwards. So yeah, even in your 20s, this can affect you. So let's move on. So firstly, low libido. What is low libido? Low libido is described as a decreased interest in sexual activity. So a lower or non-existent desire to participate in sex or be intimate with your partner. And it can happen to both men and women. It's very, very common. It can come and go or it can just come and stay around. Uh, It really, really depends on many lifestyle variables. It's definitely something you want to keep an eye on because a low libido for a long period of time may be a symptom of something else that's going on. It could be an indicator of some sort of underlying health condition. Um, Low libido in men, of course, is going to present itself not just in the lack of desire to be intimate, but more commonly that erectile dysfunction. That's usually where we see low libido or a lower sex drive appear in men. And that can be for several reasons. Of course, we're all thinking lower testosterone, which is one aspect, but it's not the main one. We've also got... um, blood pressure issues, circulation issues, um, lack of nitric oxide getting into the penis. So there's a lot of variables when it comes to 
erectile dysfunction in men. Um, but really, in my situation, not many men ask me about this. But women, nearly all the time, nearly every day, every day. So men, it usually, we're going to look at that testosterone, which can, of course, decline as you get older, but is not definite. That's dependent on your lifestyle. You can also then have that circulatory issue, not getting blood flow into the penis. That's going to be a big one. So per oxygenation in the blood, low nitric oxide, those can be big ones. And then also, this is going to sound crazy, but I'm just going to throw it out there. If you succumb to a certain virus or any sort of flu virus and you lose that sense of smell, the tissue inside our nose, and I have spoke about this before, it's quite funny. So the tissue inside our nostrils, or our nose, it's the same tissue as the tissue in our genitalia. So it is that um, same tissue, really. When we see someone lose their sense of taste, but particularly smell, it's generally connected to a zinc deficiency. So therefore, that erectile tissue that's in your nose, if you lose your sense of smell, the chances are that you may have an issue with libido as well because of that zinc deficiency. This is why when some people do get turned on or aroused, they can sneeze because the tissue in your nose, it's the same tissue that is in our genitalia or reproductive organs. So if you do get aroused, you can sneeze a lot. So you can, I suppose you could use that as a sign for wondering if your partner is in the mood or not, if he or she sneezes a lot. Um, but that's just something, that's just a side note. Women though, let's move on to you. Men, I can always come back and do a more in-depth one. And some of what I'm about to talk about in regards to women and low libido, of course, it's going to connect to men, of course. I mean, we are different species, as they say, but um, there, are, there are some commonalities that are going to affect like medications and toxic overload and stuff like that. So women... Of course, you're going to see the hormonal aspect of things. That's going to be the first thing women are going to think of. Are my hormones messed up? What's going on here? I'm going to take you back to our main hormones. So, of course, our master hormone, insulin. If insulin is messed up, if you have insulin resistance or poor metabolic flexibility, you can bet your bottoms that you're going to have irregularities and imbalances in your sex hormones. Oh, show. Sure. You definitely will. Then, so that tells us straight away, well, we at least need to get our blood sugars balanced and get that insulin in line before we look at anything else. And then we go and we look at our DHEA. Well, DHEA is a precursor and that gets converted into testosterone and then testosterone gets converted into estrogen and testosterone of course is very important for libido but so is progesterone and estrogen as well but if you have at the top of this tier something happening where your DHEA is dysfunctional and maybe you have some sort of cortisol steal happening where you've so much stress that the DHEA is being pushed down the cortisol pathway instead of the hormones, the sex hormones pathway, that could be one problem. Or if you have not enough cholesterol in your diet, if you don't have enough cholesterol, then you're not going to be able to make DHEA and the other sex hormones. So straight away, those are two very simple considerations. So we have that blood sugar imbalance, making sure insulin is functioning properly, making sure we have good metabolic flexibility. And I know many of you are saying, Shemaine, I've been working with you for months. All of this is good. What else is it? We're going to get to it. 
So we, we may have something interfering with our DHEA. And I know several of you that listen to my podcasts and follow me, you're taking DHEA supplements or bioidentical hormones. And I think me and you both know that the cause of you needing that is chronic and severe stress. So that brings us to this. Let's just look at stress. We know stress messes up everything. Everything. Stress messes up our nutrition. Stress messes up our sleep. Stress messes up our ability for brain performance. Stress messes up our ability to have patience. Stress causes cardiovascular issues. So stress is a big thing. But if you're experiencing long-term chronic stress or even like acute acute stress and your body has moved into survival mode, well, of course, the last thing you want to do at that stage is have sex. You would rather have a glass of wine. But also, if you are in that sympathetic nervous state or you're in that fight or flight state, what is happening to your hormones there? Well, your cortisol is through the roof. So straight away, there's a chance that's impairing your sex hormones. But also, we know when we're in chronic stress, our reproductive activity gets completely slowed down, if not shut off. And this is why some women can lose their period completely during times of chronic stress. So the stress, of course, is going to affect us this way. And again, If you're a mom like me and you have a very busy lifestyle, as soon as your day starts, it's like kids wake up, make breakfast, make lunch, get yourself ready, get out the door, get to kids to school, get to the gym if that's your thing, pick up groceries, talk to clients, do podcasts, make the dinner, blah, blah, blah. And it's just go, 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 go. The last thing you want to do when you are living in a state of stress is have sex at 6 a.m. This is the very last thing I want to do. I would rather sleep for the extra 30 minutes. But unfortunately, men don't get this. And this is not me as a woman complaining. This is not any of us as women complaining. This is just how life is. Uh, we, As women, we tend to be go, go, go. And then you take into consideration the stressful environment that we've been living in for the last two years. If you had the opportunity where you had an hour that you could either be intimate with your partner or you could have a nice hot bath with some candles and your favorite book and a glass of wine, I think most of us, and I'm sorry, men, but this is true, most of us are going to pick the glass of wine and the bath. Now, there are ways around this. I am going to help you improve this. But I want you to understand first why your libido may be low and what has happened to it, especially after the last two years. So if you're in that stressed fight or flight state, of course, your body, not only you, but your body is going to have no desire to be intimate or have sexual intercourse. Then you may have, of course, that cortisol steal or impairment, impairing your sex hormones. So there again, we've got conditions stacked against the chances of sexual activity. Then, of course, stress, like I said, apart from all the running around and craziness, you're tired. You're so tired at the end of the day, like so tired that... I don't know about you, I've been so tired where my eyes are just burning. Like, really, ladies, when you message me and you say that you're worried about your libido and I'm looking at you telling me all these symptoms, I'm like, well, of course you have no libido. Like, you're so tired, you're exhausted. So that in itself, of course, is a consideration is, are you resting enough? Are you getting enough sleep? So moving on from the stress part of things, then we also have what else could be causing further stress on your body? Well, one, and some of you will be surprised to hear this, but not my clients because I speak about this all the time. Low carb diets, ketogenic or very low carb diets, they are going to be a big stress on your body. 
especially in the last two years, when you're pushing your body through chronic stress and worry and running around and just anxiety and not sleeping properly, and then you come along and you're like, well, I'm just going to go low carb because maybe I can control that and get my body to where I want to be. And you know what? You end up in a deeper hole than you were when you first started because one of the best tools to turn off the central nervous system and put you into more relaxed state are carbohydrates. This is why it's important you are getting some sort of carbohydrates most days. When we taste carbohydrates, of course, we immediately send signals to our body to make serotonin. This is why we love carbohydrates so much. They make us feel good. When you produce serotonin, you immediately put your body into a more relaxed state. So straight away, there is a slight increase that you're more relaxed and you maybe might be in the mood to be intimate with your partner. Then also, we know that if you go low carb for too long, especially if there's metabolic issues, especially if there's lots of stress, you then will slow down your thyroid and your metabolism and your adrenals are going to basically clonk out. They're going to burn out. They're not going to function optimally. And then we're back into that cycle of fatigue, no energy, mood issues, irritability. Are you insane? Of course I don't want to have sex. I want to go to sleep. It's like 6 a.m. What are you doing? Yes, I know you've taught that. I know you've taught that. Like this, this episode amuses me because I've been here. I've lived through this. I've always said that I'm given these gifts and experiences so I can learn from them and I can teach people. But come on, if your adrenals are shot, you're stressed, you're pushing yourself even more because you're going low carb or you're trying to starve yourself because you want to lose some weight by Christmas, you are just pushing your body so hard and it is going to rebound and you're not going to like what happens. So this has to be taken into consideration. And all of this, like I said, is going to impair your sex hormones. Now, the next thing that can cause further stress on your body, of course, is inflammation. What's causing this inflammation? Is it a poor diet? Is it too much alcohol? Is it too much greasy foods? Like, is your thyroid slow because your nutrition is poor? We have to consider all of this. But inflammation, is it because you've been exposed to a lot of toxins because of renovations? Maybe you've been inhaling a lot of chemicals and you can feel the inflammation ever since then. Or is it because you started a new workout routine and it's just been a shock to your body and you've had chronic inflammation ever since? Is it because you overtrain? Is that why you're inflamed and you don't rest enough? Is it because you're fighting some sort of bacteria or yeast infection? Is that why you're inflamed? Regardless, severe uh, inflammation, most inflammation is a stress on your body. And back to that stress cycle, and I think you're starting to see a trend here. One thing that I have a couple of clients that do deal with um, restless leg syndrome and neuropathy in their feet, Um, and I try to help them as much as possible, and I did a podcast episode on it a couple of months back, restless leg syndrome and neuropathy, they're both inflammatory disorders. But there was a study found that men with restless legs are at higher risk for developing erectile dysfunction than those without restless legs. So this can, although the study was done on men, this goes for women as well, because the same tissue and the same function and the same idea that nitric oxide is used to give men an erection, it's all the same function that is used to encourage blood flow to the vaginal area for a woman and get her aroused. Now, Back to that inflammation, restless leg syndrome, neuropathy, these are inflammatory disorders. We have this study. We already know that inflammation is going to affect men and erections. And now we can take it a step further and say, well, 
if it's the same tissue, it's the same process for men to get an erection as it is for women to get aroused, then we know that this is going to affect us in the same way. So a lot going on there. And then the next thing, okay, this is really important. I kind of touched on this a minute ago when I mentioned if you're doing renos or painting your house and you get a lot of toxic exposure, you're inhaling a lot of chemicals. Well, we do have toxic overload. Toxic overload and impaired detoxification pathways is big when it comes to your sexual activity, your hormones, your libido. This is a big one. So heavy metals in themselves, they lower and impair estrogen and testosterone. So heavy metal toxicity is really, really common and it is a cause of hormone imbalances. It really is. And different heavy metals cause different symptoms. So you might have fatigue, you might have very sore joints, aches, pains, symptoms of arthritis, but it may not even be arthritis. It may just be that toxic overload in your body. And if we go back to the thyroid that I mentioned earlier, if you have a slower thyroid, you have slower everything. That includes slower detoxification pathways. This is why people that have slower thyroids, they also can have slower bell transit time or they'll have more constipation. And if you have constipation, then you are recirculating toxins back into your body and hormones back into your body while that waste sits in your bells and ferments even more. So this is important to understand. And these are not only like your mercury, your cadmium, your aluminium, lead, arsenic, all of that, but there's lots of more or there are lots more right down to your perfume, which can be an endocrine dis- disruptor, right down to your skincare. I've always spoke about using clean skincare products. And if I use perfume, I spray it directly on my clothes, not onto my skin. There's a lot of considerations here, but toxic overload is big. If your body is bogged down in toxins so much that you have aches and pains everywhere, you feel awful, you're fatigued, you're not going to the bathroom, you're not sleeping, you feel swollen. This all is going to impair libido. So I really think the first place that you would look there is the toxification before looking at all the other stuff. Detoxification is going to be your main priority there to get the toxins out that in itself will start to reduce inflammation and stress on your body and start to improve the hormones and everything. So then next we have, we have the whole pain aspect of things. So as women get older, and this is individual for each woman, we start to lose tissue integrity And you can see that, of course, on our face, around our mouth, around our eyes, that we may start developing wrinkles and our skin might look looser. And that's not just the skin on our face, though. That's the skin all over our body, including in our vagina. And as that skin starts to get thinner, sex can start to become more painful. And then if you throw in vaginal dryness as well, which is really, really common, if you are in pain doing something, why on earth would you want to do it again? You wouldn't. You would avoid it at all costs. So we have to consider this. And if someone already has, so if a woman has poor tissue integrity, she gets very wrinkly really fast in her younger years, or maybe she has um, varicose veins or other tissue issues, you can notice that this vaginal dryness and loss of tissue integrity in the vagina from the entrance right up to the cervix, that can become very, very thin. And then you add in the dryness And then it's very, very painful. So, of course, you wouldn't want to have sex. Like, and when I say, like, it's painful, it's very, very painful. So, so much so that I've had women tell me that it's caused them to cry 
um, during and after sex. Um, anyway, so moving on, we have all of this to consider. We have our inflammation, we have toxic overload, we have our stress, we have low carbs, we have slower thyroid, we have hormone imbalances, blood sugar imbalances, insulin sensitivity issues. Then maybe, um, like I mentioned with the stress, if you're eating too low fat, then you don't have enough cholesterol to make your hormones. And then we have the vaginal dryness and the pain. And of course, the fatigue and the busyness and just the overwhelm of life. All of this is going to be a cause of you experiencing low libido. And that's not even me mentioning about where medications come in, corticosteroids, chemotherapy, antidepressants. Depression, of course, is a big thing with low libido. I mean, you barely want to get out of the bed, let alone have sex. And then we have sleep issues, but that goes back to our whole stress aspect of things and anxiety, aging, that's where we see the hormones and the vaginal dryness and the thinning of that epithelial tissue. Um, and then alcohol, we can work both ways with alcohol, but there's so much that plays a part in your libido. My clients, those of you that I know that are listening, that have asked me about this. The reason your libido is low is because you're all stressed up to your eyeballs. You're pushing yourself too hard and you're not resting enough. We all need a vacation. This is true. We all need a vacation. And a couple of you that are listening to me, you're dealing with constipation. You're dehydrated. You're in toxic overload. All of this is going to impair your libido. And I want you to take that on board. So, okay, enough of the doom and gloom. What do we do? What do we do to fix this? Well, one I already mentioned is zinc. So zinc has been touted for a long time to be great for um, arousal and libido, not just in men, but also in women. There was a 2013 study that shows um, that zinc deficiencies, like I mentioned, can be very important to maintaining a good, sorry, that high levels of zinc can be very important to maintaining good libido and a zinc deficiency can be directly connected to reduced libido in both men and women. So, Zinc deficiencies, we've got those sneezing people, we've got that erectile dysfunction. Zinc is going to be a big one for us, for not just immunity, but for our libido. The next one that I get asked a lot about is maca. And specifically, I recommend Peruvian maca. And we can take this. There is one supplement that I really like. I take myself, not just for libido. Maca in itself is an adaptogen. So back to that stress, it can help support your adrenals and help your body deal with stress. So we have maca there. And then we have maca is great for immunity. It's great for stamina. Well, we want more stamina in the bedroom, I'm sure. It's great for endurance. This is great in the gym. There's so many benefits to maca, but when we look at maca for libido, maca is a great source um, of arginine in the body, or well, of getting arginine into the diet. So then if we can increase the arginine, then we can increase nitric oxide. And this is exactly how Viagra works. Viagra increases nitric oxide. I hope this is not too loud. I just realized I'm shouting. But, so Viagra increases nitric oxide. Maca also increases nitric oxide. There was one study a double-blind placebo controlled trial of maca root as treatment for 
antidepressant induced sexual dysfunction in women this is a 2015 study uh they sought to demonstrate that maca may be an effective treatment for sexual dysfunction in women and their conclusion maca maca root may alleviate sexual induced or sexual dysfunction in women and postmenopausal women now in peru maca has been well renowned as an aphrodisiac a tool that can be used for arousal it's used on men where they are experiencing erectile dysfunction so maca is quite effective and maca also helps rebalance hormones so ladies it is quite good for your hormones for helping balance out and that can go back to I suppose its adaptogenic properties as well not only nitric oxide which encourages blood flow around the body which is important for detoxification and energy and all that but also because maca is an adaptogen and can help then with those cortisol and prevent the cortisol from impairing the hormones and so on and so on so if you're looking at maca we're looking at Peruvian maca you can get it in a capsule form, which I like. I like to keep it simple, but I also use a powder and I recommend a powder to my clients as well. It's just not going to be as concentrated in the powder form and you'll have to use a lot more. And unfortunately, maca doesn't taste great. So, But if you do get it in powder form, you can add it to smoothies, soups, yogurts, stews, chilies, or even to tea, all that sort of stuff. Um, basically just get it into you. The next then would be Vitex. And Vitex I use a lot with my ladies with hormone imbalances and menstrual cycle issues and PMS issues. Vitex in itself upregulates dopamine pathways, so encourages those feel-good hormone feelings. But also Vitex is great for helping um, estrogen and progesterone, those ratios to balance out. So I really think Vitex is an option here. You can either get it in capsule form or tea form with Vitex. Vitex has a bit of a strange taste in tea form, but after a while, you actually, I start to really like it. Okay, so I'm going to move on because I'm aware of the time and I know people get distracted after a certain amount of time. Magnesium. Magnesium is important for over 8,000 functions in the body. Magnesium is important for energy. It's important for thyroid. It's important for adrenal support. It's very, very important for adrenal support. It's important for regulating cortisol and other hormones. So if you have a magnesium deficiency you need to um, bump up your magnesium. And I like, of course, I'm renowned for talking about elemental magnesium and then magnesium malate. Okay, so then we have those carbs, just making sure that you're getting enough carbs. And maybe if on like your treat day or your refeed day or your feast day, you're getting those extra carbs in, you're feeling a bit more relaxed, you feel a bit more aroused. Maybe that might be the day or date night for you and your partner to be intimate. Also, carbohydrates increase nitric oxide in the body too. But there is a balance. There is that balance. So if we look at men with terrible diets, they have erectile dysfunction. But if we can get that balance just right then we can use those carbs to encourage the nitric oxide and encourage those feel good hormones and get you in the mood. So making sure you have good carb balance in your body. This is very important. I'm just going to throw this in here as a side note. If you're someone that lives a stressed lifestyle and you're sick all the time and you don't eat enough carbs, it's because you're not eating enough carbs. You need carbs to help keep you out of or at least get you out of that stressed state for periods of time and allow your body to relax and regenerate carbs are important then we have our anti-inflammatories of course and that can be foods that can be supplements you want to be focused on anti-inflammatory everything regardless of libido or not just anti-inflammatory everything all the time Inflammation is the main cause of hair loss. So anti-inflammatory, everything, all the time, okay? 
And I've done loads of episodes and posts on inflammation. Go check it out for a list of foods, supplements, hacks, everything. We're not going to spend too much time on that here. Then we have, okay, these last, well, last few things, okay. We have body brushing to encourage blood flow to the vaginal area. A, the way a woman gets aroused or turned on or eager to be intimate is by encouraging blood flow to the vaginal area. So men, you have a job there to encourage that. But women, you can body brush. I did a whole podcast episode on body brushing. Listen to it. You're brushing up your thighs, in towards your groin. You're brushing and feeding that blood in towards the pelvic area. You're encouraging blood flow in there. You're helping with circulation. Body brushing can be beneficial in this area. And also when you have good blood flow in the vaginal area, you then of course are going to um, be encouraging, I don't want to say moistness because people think Moist is a dirty word nowadays, but you're going to be helping with that vaginal dryness. Okay, then we have, of course, our in inversion moves. All of our inversion moves, of course, are going to be encouraging blood flow back towards the pelvic area, towards the reproductive um, organs, towards your heart, so that circulation improves. So inversion as much as you can. You want to be stacking conditions in your favor, body brushing, inversion. And then if you do, there is some, I'm not going to say research, but I've heard stories and antidotal um, stuff from clients and other researchers in the sex industry. So sexual health physicians, that if we apply coconut oil or avocado oil or even shea butter, or even I posted about this a while ago, grass-fed unsalted butter, to the vagina, we encourage that tissue healing and growth. We encourage plumpness. We keep the area dry or moist and lubricated by applying these oils regularly. And of course, if you're applying coconut oil, you're also preventing infections. And infections, of course, if you are constantly dealing with infections you're not going to want to be intimate but coconut of course has antibacterial and antimicrobial properties so not only are you encouraging lubrication and helping the skin heal in that vaginal area and plumping things up you're also keeping that ph good and the environment healthy down there so that's our vaginal ecology so again that can be coconut oil avocado oil shea butter, unsalted grass-fed butter, and even a really good extra virgin olive oil. They can be applied directly to the vaginal tissues, um, and they can be really beneficial, but also give you relief. If you have vaginal dryness, you know how uncomfortable it can be. Just applying a little amount of these oils or butters can give you instant relief. So, and then that in itself is going to encourage you to do it again and again. And if you have that pain that we spoke about when you have sex, you can also use these oils as lubricants too. So quite safe. Um, and they give a lot of relief along with all the other benefits they have. And then I mentioned the infections. If you're constantly suffering with yeast infections, um, bacterial vaginosis, even bladder infections, you need to get those sorted out because, of course, they're going to turn you off being intimate. So you need to take care of them. So that's, that's quite a lot. I mean, that's not even me saying prioritize sleep and look at other adaptogens to support your adrenals as well. But I hope you're taking away some of the biggest things here. One more thing I didn't mention is I use vitamin C a lot for balancing sex hormones. So I think everyone should have vitamin C in their diet, especially women. And then vitamin D3. We all know it's great for immunity. But vitamin D3 in doses of over 10,000 international units or more is very effective anti-inflammatory. So there's a lot to go on here. There, there really is a lot. Watch out for these toxins. And that would include your menstrual products. Um, 
go back and check out the posts and I think a podcast episode that I did on menstrual products and the toxicity associated there and how that can affect you not only in regards to infections and causing vaginal pain and discomfort. So that was episode 201. Are your menstrual products hurting you? Check that out. There's so much to learn, but when we take a step back, it all connects. It all intertwines. It usually comes down to stress, inflammation, blood sugar issues, not sleeping right. Like those usually are the main ones. So this episode has got a lot. We're pushing out. What are we at now? 40 minutes so far. So one of my longest ones so far. But there is a lot to consider. And then if you have been on birth control, that's going to be a player in whether or not um, your libido is functioning optimally. We also have those perimenopause symptoms. We've got hot flashes, night sweats. We want to look at that. That's usually down to nutrition and stress. Um, So We also, of course, you would get your hormones checked by your doctor just to check that they're all in the correct ranges as well. Um, That would include look at your thyroid. Even though low thyroid is a symptom, we still like to know where it is so then we can look at what might be causing this. And then, like I mentioned, the effect that heavy metals have on the endocrine system, so your hormonal system. And that could be heavy metals from food sources, sushi, even some vegetables, um, seafood, or heavy metal exposure because of the industry you're in. Maybe you work in a warehouse with paints. Like there's a lot to consider here. Um, I'm going to leave it at that. This has been going on for quite a while. Like I said, I might do a follow-up in a couple of weeks just to refresh everyone's mind and go over a couple of things that maybe I've missed. Um, But for sure, if you're considering boosting your libido, you got to get that inflammation down. You got to detoxify. You got to rest. And then you look at your zinc, maybe some maca, make sure you're eating good nutrition, taking care of yourself, self-care, body brushing, inversion to improve blood flow, hot baths also improve blood flow. And then you can use those tools like the coconut oils, or the extra virgin olive oils to help with vaginal discomfort and dryness. So you have a lot of tips there, but you got to stop. Take a few minutes, look at your lifestyle. Is there a reason I don't want to be intimate? Am I exhausted? Am I stressed up to my eyeballs? (laughs) Those two hands, you're probably saying yes to both of them. Like before we look at anything else, it's probably both of them. So I hope you found this really helpful. Send me any messages or questions you have around this and I'll be happy to respond. Please share with anyone you feel may benefit from this information because believe me, this is very, very common and people are lost. They don't know what to do. Also, if you wouldn't mind it being Christmas and the season of giving and all of that, if you could find the time and felt I deserved it, would you be so kind to leave me a review on your favorite podcast platform, whether or not that's iTunes or even YouTube, you can leave me reviews on whatever platform that you're on, that would help me um, so much. The more reviews we get, the more we reach more people and so on and so on. Okay, I'm going to let you go. Enjoy the rest of your week, stay safe, and I'll chat to you guys real soon. Bye-bye.